Hello, hello! Just in case any one of you still wonders why I keep playing around with the Galaxy Watch 4 on what essentially is an electrical engineering channel, well, the answer is simple. I have this guy for a little consulting project. And today I wanted to show you how, first of all, to de enable developer mode on the thing, and secondarily, how to set it up for debugging so that you can connect it to your Android Studio instance on your workstation. Let us start off with the most important thing first, getting into developer mode. For this, we need to go in here, into the settings application. And yes, I cannot change the language anymore, because the language you can only select during startup when you do it the first time. But you see here an option, developer mode. And if this option is not yet available, we need to go here into the information, software, and then here we find an option which says software version. And we just go and mash this. And you see how it expands and contracts. And then eventually it says developer mode is enabled. And when it has done this, you see, we can go back into the settings. And then here we've got a developer mode where we have various options such as enabled when charging. You see this here. And you can enable ADB here. This is important. When you enable ADB, it asks you yes or no. You need to say yes. And then we are also going to enable Wi-Fi debugging, even though we don't have a Wi-Fi yet. And yes, down here, you see we have various options for increasing and reducing the speed of the animations. And this is quite useful because the watch displays a lot of animations when it's working. And uh, well, it wastes some time. Here we've got one important intermezzo. The connection behind this magnetic charging pack and this guy is not particularly stable. And that makes debugging, even via Wi-Fi, annoying because you run out of power quite frequently. And I built myself this little stand, it's still a prototype, but it works good enough, where you can basically jiggle with it a little bit and then you can, you see you have it like this, it's connected, and then you can use the watch more comfortably. This is course, of course but a prototype, but I still enjoy using it even in its still relatively early state and it just makes keeping the watch charged so much easier. And one more thing, before we move into the work with Android, we see here the operating system version is version 11. So this, even though it's an Android Wear OS 3 device, it's still running on Android 11. And yes, of course, you should connect yourself to the Wi-Fi on which your workstation is connected, but this is a topic for the next step. In case any one of you wonders why I was able to finish the model so quickly, the answer is this, OpenSCAD. OpenSCAD is a fully parametric modeling system for 3D objects, which is based on a Python or C-like programming language. And yes, this book is written by me, it's like 200 pages, English and German, and explains how to get started with OpenSCAD. So, if you want to do me a favor, like, subscribe, or buy the book. Thank you! First things first, I've got the watch connected to my PC, and as you can see here, it shows the charging symbol. You see here on the top, it shows that it's being charged by the workstation, and now, I mesh LSUSB and you see there is nothing H, nothing to be found from Samsung. So the Galaxy Watch 4 does not have the capability to perform USB debugging or at least it does not have this capability with the included charger. And be that as it may, in the next step, I always like to have the corresponding version of Android installed. So in my case, it's Android 11 R. So here I go, and then I just authorize the usual download and deployment. And yes, I'm using Android Studio Arctic Fox, mainly because I also do some Kotlin work, and it's just more pleasant to work with Kotlin when you use this very new version of the product.
As any one of you who follows this channel for a long time knows, I'm not a big fan of connecting developer workstations to the internet via Wi-Fi. But here we have to do it. And so my trick is this. I have a development router, which is purely for this kind of development job. And I simply disconnect my workstation from the room switch, connect the development router to the room switch, and then I connect the workstation to the development router and the watch to the development router. And in practice, if you always leave the development router connected to the room switch, you just have to exchange the Ethernet cable to select between development router and normal direct Internet access. Well, at this point in time, we have to go into the Wi-Fi settings. We click the Wi-Fi and we get the IP address, which is here 2.117. You could also use Nmap to find the watch, but if we have this here already, why shouldn't we use it? And at this point, we can go here. It's important you need to select the right path, because sometimes you have two ADBs installed. And then we use the IP address and we hit here, enter. And of course, we shouldn't forget this. And now we see that the watch has complained. And now we must say always allow from this computer and then we must repeat it. And now it says already connected and now we can go here and now we see the watch. It shows up as a target. And now in the final step, we of course have to create a new project. And we go here, new project. And then we have here via OS. We select a blank activity. Next step. Then here you see all the options. We're going to click finish. And now we see the Android Studio project generator is working on spawning our little project skeleton, downloading some components. As always, Google is and remains Google after all. And then as we see here, we can select our target and we see it has disappeared. So let's check what happened. And we see the connection has been lost. So sometimes we need to do another RDB connect. Now it's connected, RDB devices. Now we can see it. And now we can go here, we can click run. Now we see it's performing a compilation task. We do another ADB devices to see it's still here. Perfect. And now we can watch Gradle build is running. And now we see it's already starting to install on the watch. And then here we have Tada! Hello round world. So we've successfully deployed our application to the Android smartwatch. Well, well, at this point, we've got this guy connected to the PC and we can deploy applications. Now, however, one important question remains, or rather a question which you have to answer. Creating applications for smartwatches is a completely different science, not only to developing on the desktop, but also to developing on the mobile phone, as you can see in this document here. When you start off with a smartwatch application, you really need to think about how you can create value for the customer and what you actually want to do. And yeah, with this, I wanted to thank you for listening and wish you all the best and see you next time. Bye bye.